أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We'll start inshallah with um, our second lesson of Al-Usul Al-Munifa li Imam Abi Hanifa This is a book as we said before um, was gathered from uh, five small books booklets or um, uh, by the Imam Abu Hanifa um, and um, we we started like we gave introduction about about the book and about those uh, five uh, booklets and we started last time uh, with the introduction here um, and uh, the first part where um, or, or we, we we left off when we were talking about why do we need to learn about uh, and, and basically uh, go in depth in terms of the challenges and the rebuttals and so on despite the fact that Sahaba didn't do that so that's basically what what the the issue is. Uh, a lot of people, or some some um, of those who do not understand uh, the aqidah properly and so on uh, as a ilm, um, will say, "Oh, that's uh, the Sahaba didn't do that. The sahaba didn't talk about these issues. Why are you talking about them?" And an Imam Abu Hanifa was basically replying, answering, "Why do we have to do that?" And we we talked about the first part, where, which is basically. And the Sahaba time, they didn't have those people challenging and debating um, those uh, like the Islam uh, creed. So they didn't have to go through that. It was basically more of, of educational thing, not challenges and uh, and rebuttal and and uh, thinking about hypothetical situations and rebuttal them and stuff like that. So that's the first part. The second part is what, like why we 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 have to learn that that knowledge or that I'll Al-Aqidah is because um, when when you hear something, the Imam Abu Hanifa is saying, when you hear something, min anna rajula ida kafalisana. If you hear something, and even if you said nothing about it, if you, even if you don't talk about it, um, but you heard it, you cannot help it, but you ha- your 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 heart, your mind will have to think about it, right? You, you cannot basically prevent your heart, even if you are able to prevent your tongue from talking about it, you will not be able to prevent your heart from considering it and thinking it about it. And then your heart will 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 have either, there will be two, two situations, whether or either your heart will gonna, is going to hate it, whatever you heard, say you heard a, a challenge of, of a principle of Aqidah, Right, you are not rebutting or, or or debating with that person who is challenging your religion. Okay, but your heart is either going to be hating it or loving it. Okay, and if you hear something that you don't know much about it, even it doesn't have to be challenging to a principle of aqidah. It could be uh, something a bid'ah, but you don't know whether it is a bid'ah or not. Then your heart is going to be engaged in thinking and considering about it. So we are either gonna hate mean and yakra your heart either gonna hate it yakra ahd al amrain aw al amrain jamian. So you may if you heard it, you will like the two positions, the challenges, something, and it's the the, the other position. You either gonna hate one of them and like the other, or you are gonna hate both of them, or you are going to love both of them. But that is that that cannot happen. If they are different, if they are challenging, you cannot love both of them. And وَإِذَا مَالَ الْقَلْبِ إِلَى الْجَوْرِ So one, let's say one of those like like positions is correct, and the other is is unjust. الجور جور means ظلم or unjust or wrong or or bid'ah or anything like that. So if your heart inclined toward that. Then you will be, you will be in, in, in inclined and in likeness to muqtadi'ah. You will be with them, or part of them. You will be basically added to to to, to that group as muqtadi'ah. If you liked the muqtadi'ah world, uh, and if you in, in, are inclined to the truth, with amala ila al wa arafa ahla, and know and and learn it or knew about their their people, the people of truth, you will be waliyan for them. You will be like a friend to them. And 
وإذا لم تعرف المخطئ من المصيب لا يضرك في خصلة if you don't know who is correct or who is right and who is wrong that doesn't hurt you in one in one from one uh, from one perspective ويضرك بعد في خصال غير واحدة but it will hurt you or would affect you negatively affect you um, and cause you harm in many other uh, perspectives فأما الخصلة التي لا ت... التي تضرك فإنها the الخصلة التي لا تضرك this actually is wrong لا تضرك so the 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 perspective or or the characteristic or the feature that doesn't hurt you is that you are not accountable you are not responsible for the wrongdoer the other wrongdoer so the other wrongdoer that you heard there talking for example and it, it will not hurt you because from that aspect because it is their um their wrongdoing however it will still be hurting you from what from what aspect from a few aspects or three aspects the first is isma al-jahala you become jahil you are then considered al-jahil because you do not know what is wrong from what is right okay woman remember we're talking about what about if you don't know what is right and what is wrong knowing not knowing so basically not con- not concerning about researching to find out who is right who's wrong which with who like you have somebody is raising an issue and ahl sunnah or the, the the scholars rebutting them and replying to them and so on you hear that you hear that and you don't know who's who, who's who and which is that you don't know then that doesn't hurt you from because one of them is a is a wrongdoer it is their wrongdoing however you become gahil first of all you become gahil you become ignorant because you don't know the the right from from wrong woman wasafa adlan wa lam ya'lam jura man yukhalifu man yukhalifu yani wa man wasafa adlan somebody listen to or knew something that is correct proper or adl and just and no, did it know the the challenge the un, the unjust challenge in that case you are ignorant for in in both you are ignorant in al jur and ignorant in al adl you are ignorant in the just and uh, unjust in both sides so basically you are a total ignorant there's basically the first the first item that will be like from that aspect from that perspective not engaged or not knowing is hurting you from this side the other side or, or the other aspect is although at, the, at this stage maybe that issue that shubha shubha means the doubt okay that has been cast by the ch- those who is challenging or or, or raising a bid'ah or or uh, raising a challenge against the uh, aqidah creed or anything like that and you don't know maybe that that issue maybe you are not thinking much about it now it's not bothering you but maybe in the future it starts bothering you and it starts like challenging your understanding of your own religion similar to what happened to others and you don't know how to get out of it because you don't know you don't know who is right and who's wrong okay so that also another another aspect or another point where uh, not knowing who's right and who's wrong would be hurtful to you the third is لا تدري من يحب من لا يدري ولا لا تدري من تحب في الله ومن تبغض في الله لانك لا تدري المخطئ من المصيب again you don't know who you should be like who you should like for Allah, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who, who you should love for Allah, and who you should hate for Allah. Like, you, you don't like al-bid'ah, you don't like al-mubtada'ah. But, and you like the, 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 the people of truth, the people of uh, righteous, and so on. Um, and if you don't know who's who and which is which, then basically, uh, again, you don't know who, you will be in, indifferent. You don't know Sheikh Al-Azhar and uh, other anybody else. Basically, they are basically both the same to you. 
and also that is that is not right or not good position to be in all right so again so basically all that mean or or in, encouraging and in, and and basically inviting people to understand and get engaged in aqidah and understand the issues that uh, come to the surface because the, the imam of hanifa radiallahu anhu realized and knew that every era every age there are other or there are issues that come um, and being raised um, and and people the scholars have to engage and have to be um, uh, like aware of what happens and address those issues head on وقال في الرسالة وقال في الرسالة إمام أبي حنيفة in in الرسالة which is the other um, uh, treatises called a رسالة or a book booklet وأعلم أن أفضل ما علم علمتم أو علمتم وما تعلمون أو ما وما تعلمون الناس السنة so and know that realize that the best thing that you learned and you teach is a سنة سنة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنت ينبغي لك أن تعرف من أهلها. You need to know who is أهل السنة. Who those who 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 are those people who are basically engaged or or learn the سنة and protecting the سنة and teaching it and so on. الذي ينبغي أن يتعلم منه ويعلم. ولا عمري ما في شيء باعد باعد من الله عذر لأهلي ولا فيما أحدث الناس وابتدع أمر يهتد به. ولا الأمر إلا ما أجابه القرآن ودعا إليه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وكان عليه الأصحابة حتى تفرق الناس so basically the best thing that has always basically be there and the worst thing that causes people to go astray is things that are not related to سنة النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام البدعة the, the, the bad side of بدعة the, the bad بدعة uh, as we learned uh, like before what is better we talked about what is better and uh, um, the types of it and, and so on and the linguistic meaning of bid'ah and the shari the, the terminology meaning of bid'ah so from a terminology pe- um, uh, side uh, or, or uh, terminology uh, point of view in bid'ah the bad bid'ah that's basically what causes p- people to get astray uh, and we talked about the bad bid'ah before and said it's something that has no a foundation or no ground in Sunnah or in the Quran, right? But if something that has ground has Sunnah in Sunnah or Quran, then it is not bad bid'ah. Uh, it is basically extension to the to the Sunnah. For example, uh, when um, and we gave a lot of examples before, uh, but just to to remind you, uh, like for, when uh, Sayyidina Bilal radiAllahu anhu arda, uh, the Prophet peace be upon him went to him and said, Bilal, I hear your steps in the Jannah. What, what do you do? So Bilal said, um, basically, uh, I, I do rak'atain, I pray two rak'ah every time I make wudu. Okay, so that's bid'ah. There is nothing that the Prophet didn't ask him or didn't instruct him to do that. But prayer is something that is basically the, the, the voluntarily and added prayer, nafl. Prayer is something that sunnah encouraged and wudu is something that sunnah encourages. You have to, to, to make wudu. So basically, it's a combination of something or, or, or on the ground uh, of the sunnah. So it's basically ex, 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 um, accepted and considered as sunnah, not bid'ah. And um, the proof of, of that is the Prophet, peace be upon him, didn't approve it at first. He basically asked him why he is already getting rewards rewarded for it. And basically got like in, in, in got a stage or, or a place in al-jannah already and the prophet asking him why uh, i keep hearing your steps in al-jannah how is that how is that possible okay so um and again the the other sahabi who did uh, the the tasbih after the the ruku' and the prophet asked who is that and he the prophet said i saw uh, over 30 angel taking it and writing it down and want to, to, to basically be the first to write it down. Again, that was before the prophets approved it, like specifically. like So, so there is no um, uh, hadith or, ev- or instruction or something for it specifically. But again, the dhikr and the tasbih and praising Allah is something that is encouraged and 
and required and instructed by Quran and Sunnah. And, and, and so on. Basically, you can apply that in, in, in everything. Um, also, the hadith, من سنة في الإسلام سنة حسنة فله أجرها وأجر من عمل بها. Anybody who may do sunnah, good sunnah in Islam, he has, he will take like uh, its reward and the reward of those who did it after him. So here again, you are, you are, they are making, you are making sunnah. That's a, that's a bid'ah from a linguistic point of view. It's something that new you added, but it's based on the sunnah. It's an extension to the sunnah. And therefore, from a shari point of view, like or, or a bad bid'ah point of view, it is not considered as such. But the, the Sheikh, the Imam here, Imam Abu Hanifa, is basically saying saying exactly that. For, for things that the Quran and Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with and instructed uh, and the Sahaba were, were on it, that's basically the best thing and everything else against that or so that against it or doesn't serve that is basically mubtada' muhdith and, and leads people to go astray and make them to do tafarruq is basically get... Uh, uh, deviated or, or, or um, uh, divergent out of, of the sunnah. All right. وقال في رواية أبي عصمة المرزوي المروزي عفوا فما أحدث الناس من الكلام في الأعراض والأجساد فما قالات الفلاسفة عليك بالأثر وطريقة السلف وإياك وطريقة السلف وإياك وكل محدث محدثة فإنها بدعة. So basically uh, again, this is kind of the same thing. Uh, the Imam is talking about the al uh, like going uh, deep into the philosophy or philosophy terminologies and and deviating from the simple and straightforward way of the Quran and Sunnah and so on. Okay. All right. Um, Again, he, the Imam is saying you, you avoid that and basically keep on the the, the Athar wa Tariqat al Salaf and the, the way of the Salaf and the way of the Quran and the Sun. وقال في الفقه الأبسط وحدثني حماد عن إبراهيم عن علقمة عن ابن مسعود عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال من أحدث حدثا في الإسلام فقد هلك وأن ابتدع بدعة فقد ضل ومن ضل ففي النار. So again, this hadith. About um, creating or inventing something that in religion that is not in line of what the Prophet peace be upon him came up with, like for example, you want to add another prayer um, as a fard, you cannot do that. You can say, okay, we have five fard salah, well, I'm going to make them six. You cannot do that. That's against Sharia. Uh, but doing nafl, you can do nafl whatever as much as you want. You, you, you just keep praying and so on. وحدثنا حماد عن إبراهيم عن ابن مسعود أنه كان يقول شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وفي كل ضلالة في النار Again, we basically, we know that hadith it is uh, very, very famous and we explained it uh, already before and also uh, just now. Is there any question for in this part? I don't want to like labeled much uh, points that were already explained and already recorded in other recordings. So, but if there is like an issue or a, or a question, let me know. Uh, we can explain it inshallah. Anyway. وروى عن أبي هريرة وروي عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال افترقت بنو إسرائيل على اثنتين أو افترقت اثنتين وسبعين فرقة وستفترق أمتي ثلاثة وسبعين فرقة كلهم في النار إلا السواد الأعظم. This is a very important hadith and there are two two sides of it that I'd like to address. Uh, the first, which in my opinion is the most important, is the last part here. إلا السواد الأعظم. And there are other hadith where people are asking Prophet peace be upon him about al fitan and what happens to al fitna and how to 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 survive and 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 save yourself. And it, it is always, all the narrations and the different narrations will be to stick to the Asawad al-Adam, the majority of, of Muslims, the majority of people, okay? Um, and that's why, that's why the Ahl al-Sunnah is basically nine, over 90% of Muslims. 
اهل السنه هو از نوت سلفيز اور وهابيز وهابيز ار فراكشن دي ار دي ارنت از ماتش اند ذا فور ذات فاكت باي ات سيلف از انف تو بوينت اوت ذات الامه ذا مو ذا ماجورتي اوف ذا امه كانوت بي ديفينس السواد الاعظم من من الامه ذا ذا فاست ماجورتي ذا بيجست بورشن اور ذا بيجر بورشن اوف ذا امه كانوت بي ديفينس Um, in fiqh, you can have different opinion in, in fiqh, but being a different opinion in fiqh, that's not being deviant. Like de- being deviant, that's an aqidah principle, having something that is a, a, a principle of Islam or a principle of uh, um, like the, the ilm of al-aqidah. This is where um, people deviate into groups and different sects and so on. These are what we're talking about, like Mu'tazila, Ahl sunnah Al-Hashwiyah, uh, who's like corporealist, like Wahhabi and Salafi and so on. Those are the sects. But uh, Abu Hanifa wa Shafi'i and all those kind of fiqh um, scholars, that that is ishtihad. And this is very important. You can, if you do ishtihad, okay, you have something here. And from ishtihad, from the same dalil, from the same evidence, Abu Hanifa says something. We have the same Quran, the same Hadith. Abu Hanifa said an opinion. Shafi'i said an, another opinion. And so on. Four madhabs, right? And others, we have actually, there were like 40 mujtahid at some point of time, even not 80 something. So, every opinion here is based on, on what? Based on the same, like the same source, but that difference is difference that is like boils down to the same principle. Although they are different, but they are basically goes down. And when you think about them, they, they, they go down to the same principle. When you have something that is basically, it, it is different, but they are totally different. They are not, they, when you, you consider them, they are not based on the same principle. And those even like those two, they are every, every set of them is based on different principle. And those two principles are against each other. Then that's something else. That now, now we are talking about being a deviant. Okay, we, we, we gave a lot of examples about that before. Again, I'm just pointing it out. Um, so that's the first, like, f- first uh, point I'd like to address here. The second is um, in, the, in the meaning of the hadith, in, in this hadith. Um, this hadith is saying, the Prophet is saying, like the previous Umam and Banu Israel and, and uh, Nasara and Jews and, and Christians and so on, they um, separated into different or divergent into different divisions or, or, or sects, right? 27, uh, 72 and 71 in other, like 71 for Jews and 72 for Christians in other narrations. And my Ummah, the Prophet is saying, my Ummah is going to di- um, diverge into um 73 uh, firqa group or sect كلهم في النار all of them are in in, in fire in hellfire except in, in narration 1 and in this narration here we have is less sawad al adam the vast majority okay now these um a lot of people talked about the the meaning of that hadith and uh, the 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 explanation that makes sense and the best explanation I found is basically um, the, the the prophet here is talking about the ummah which is the call upon um, ummah, the call upon because uh, the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam has two ummahs the, the ummah that he calls upon basically he was sent to and he was sent to everybody. So the entire human race, basically, and, and even jinn. The Prophet, peace be upon him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was even sent to the angels, in, in some opinions. So anyway, so basically the Ummah here, in the general Ummah. General Ummah means everybody. Those who believed in him, and those who didn't believe in him. Kafir. So the Kafir is actually considered from the Ummah of the Prophet from that aspect. Because he is considered like that the Prophet was sent to them. The fact that they didn't 
believe in him, that's a different story. But he is from his ummah because he was sent to them to warn them and to tell them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. Okay? Like, for example, Isa ibn Maryam alayhi wa ala nabiyya salatu wa salam, he was sent to Bani Israel. But most of Bani Israel didn't believe in him. But his ummah is Bani Israel, even though they didn't believe in him. Okay, so that's the general meaning of ummah. And then, the, then the, there is a special meaning of ummah, which is the ummah, those who are the, saved by the Prophet, those who have believed in, in him. That's a different. And then you have to be very careful when you're reading hadith and reading content, like the, the reading books and stuff like that. What is the context? Is it considering the entire Ummah, the gen, like the Ummah in a general sense, those who the Prophet who sent to, or only the Ummah who's believed in, who, who have believed in him, like in the meaning of believed in him. So the meaning of hadith here is consistent with the general, or the, the, the word Ummah, was sort of like Ummati here, my Ummah here, is consistent with the general understanding of, of Ummah, which is basically everybody. Okay, so that includes everybody because the the, the Ummah of the Prophet, when he was when he was sent, he became like he he was sent to everybody, and every big everybody becomes or became his Ummah now. And they deviated into a lot of 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 sects, including the previous ones. And therefore, because of that, only one is basically those who believed in him. Those are which is the Muslims. Those are the saved the saved ones. And this is consistent with with everything every, everything. And this makes the hadith much more sense, or gives the hadith much more sense, because in that case, we understand, and that's basically consistent with the Quran and with other hadith that all Muslims are uh, are uh, saved, inshallah, um, uh, by believing in, 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 in Nabi alayhi salatu salam. So even though those who has deviated, they are still considered Muslims. They are not kafir. So Mu'tazila, for example, they are not kafir. They are not going to hellfire. Nobody say that. We, we, we as Ahl Sunnah do not call or we do not say any Muslim kafir. All of them are Muslims. All of them, inshallah, are saved. All right. وَرُوِيَ عَنْ مَيْمُونَ بِنْ مَهْرَانَ عَنْ ابْنِ عَبْنِ بَهْرَانَ عَنْ ابْنِ عَبَّاسِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمَا أَنَّ رَجُلًا أَتَى النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَقَالَ So uh, hadith narrated uh, through Ibn Abbas that the Nabi والسلام, the Prophet peace be upon him, so a man came to him, to the Prophet, said, Ya Rasulullah, alimni, teach me. So the Prophet said, قال, uh, قال the Prophet uh, peace be upon him said, فَذْهَبْ فَتَعَلَّبَ الْقُرْآنِ ثلاثاً. Go and learn the Quran. Go learn the Quran. Go learn the Quran three times. Then he said in the fourth, أقبل, أقبل, أقبل الحق ممن جاء به حبيبا كان أو بغيضا. Accept the truth and the right from wh whoever came came with it, whether you like him or whether you love him or you hate him. Again, this is very important. That one of the 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 problems and the plagues that we have now, especially within even even within talabat al ilm and student of ilm and even within scholars, that they will reject the truth and the right because they don't like the person who said it. And they will accept anything, even if it is wrong, because they like the people who said it. And, and this, is, this is very, very, very bad thing to, to do. Like for example, those who follow Ibn Taymiyyah, they just love him to the extent that anything bad he has done, or he has said, they accept it. Even though it is very clear it's actually from like it, it, it's it's very very bad thing to say about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but they will accept it because it's Ibn Taymiyyah said it it's very bad thing about Ali ibn Abi Talib about the Prophet but they will accept it because Ibn Taymiyyah said it and so on this is fitna um, and then the, the Prophet continues the hadith um, الْقُرْآنِ وَمِلْ مَعَهُ حَيْثُ مَال learn the Quran and basically in مِلْ مَعَهُ حَيْثُ مَال meaning Accept what it's, the Quran said and um, your opinion and your heart and your mind, your thinking should be inclined and goes with the Quran and with what the Quran came with 
like in every direction. If the Quran said this way, then you go this way. Quran said that way, you go that way, and so on. So you, you can see from here until now that the, the Imam Abu Hanifa is giving um, giving us a lot of advices, all based on Sunnah and the Quran and follow the Sunnah and follow the Quran. Again, and that show you those who who accused the Imam of not following the Sunnah or he didn't learn much about the Sunnah or he didn't know the Sunnah. These people are totally ignorant. They don't know what they are talking about. Um, uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, he had a complete musnad of a hadith, all right? We and we have that with Isnad, inshallah. We maybe we hold some sessions to uh, to pass that this musnad to you and give the Isnad to you as well. Um, and and Imam Abu Hanifa was one of the tabi'in. He he is narrating some hadith through a, uh, through a sahabi to a prophet. So only one man between him and the prophet. So how come he he doesn't know sunnah or he doesn't know a hadith? The, that's nonsense. All out of, of hate against Imam Abu Hanifa or for Imam Abu Hanifa because they are deviants and Imam Abu Hanifa stood solidly uh, and and challenging challenged their, their deviance and pointed out it them and, and basically uh, rebutted their positions. So they hate him for that. Especially corporealists and um and and uh, Muqtada'a. All right, so that basically finishes the introduction and then um Al Bab al Awal fi Ma'rifat Allah wal Iman al Ijmali bih. This is a very important topic. Uh we inshallah will we'll start with it next time. Um about Iman and what is what is Iman, what what's constituting Iman and how can you be considered mu'min or who is considered mu'min and so on. We inshallah continue that next time. Uh, any questions? <laughs>